Okay, we are gonna start. We um the bliss vendors came together. This is our first quarter panel. So some are on Zoom and some are in person. So we're just gonna kind of start. It's our first quarter and we're talking about the 2023 housing market and how to get business. So um I think we have Bridget online. Um I think that's the only vendor online, um, I believe, if that's correct. And then everyone else is in person. So we'll have everyone in person take a turn and then we'll have Bridget chime in. Does that sound good? And then we get done and then we can ask questions. Agents have questions to so get ready. Sound good? Yeah, Vicki's on there. Perfect. Okay. Do you want to just go around and introduce yeah. ourselves? Yeah, introduce okay. and. But do you want to like introduce and then have questions, or do you want to just <laughs> however you guys want to go? This is the first time doing it, so we don't have any rules. We're just keeping it light, keeping it easy. Stacy, <laughs> start up. <laughs> Since okay. you just went with it. Okay. Um, I'm Stacey Neal with Wallach and Wolf Mortgage. I am the branch manager and a senior mortgage advisor. I've been in lending for 10 years. Um, I'm a native of Arizona. I live in Queen Creek. Our office is in Mesa. Um, you know, a lot of the people in this room, we've been coaching and helping our realtor partners through this market, as well as our own team members, I feel like sometimes, um, and just trying to stay positive. Um, I'm thinking maybe we introduce and then, and then, and then pick a topic and then we can talk about it. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. My name is Tim Keith. I'm a branch manager, escrow officer for Great American Trail. Our offices is right here, a couple of buildings over. So real close to Bliss. And uh, we've been a partner now for a few months. So looking to team up with some of the agents and help you out as you get started in the business. and. And maneuver through these complicated times. The way things are changing, but uh, here for any title escrow questions you might have. I'm not. I'm not a sales manager or sales rep. I'm. I'm actually escrow. So if you have any questions on that, a part of it. Um, I think the other title vendors here are, are reps. So I can help you out with that information. But happy to be here. Been in the business a long time. Great American now for about three or four years. Uh, great company, and happy to be here with you. Thank you. All right, Matt. I'm Matt Goldberg with Bear Financial Group. My brother and I run the Goldberg Group over there. Um, have a, a team of support so that we can spend our time cultivating relationships, working with realtor partners, clients, answering questions, and making sure that everyone has peace of mind and comfort uh, and confidence because that is, you know, what we find is the biggest sort of roadblock to moving forward with all these things. So, the more education and information we can provide, the better off everybody is. I'm Shannon Goldberg, uh, Grand Canyon title, title and escrow, um, been in sales 18 years. I'm going to go on Stacy's track. I'm originally from Alaska, not Arizona, but uh, live here currently in Tempe. Um, I love helping agents grow a personal and digital brand for their marketing um, to get into the digital age. So sell title and escrow insurance, but enjoy helping them expand their reach. I'm Mark Keating. I own King Home Inspections. Um, I was one of the first home inspectors licensed in the state. There, there is no such thing as the first because there was a, an entire group of us that they just grandfathered in and brought us in. I was part of that um, 20 years now. Uh, teach CE classes through Mara's school. Um, so we, we teach a lot about the insurance and the, the legal side of all that. Uh, just a positive note because I, as I've watched the the Cromper report for years now. My wife's a realtor. Our lead inspector's a realtor. Her the sister's a realtor. Um, we have kind of felt like, and this has been said to me as well, but we're about a month ahead of what everybody starts to see in statistics. And I can only tell you for the last five weeks, we have been crazy busy. Pre pandemic, over the top book busy. Good. I'm Ralph Conway, managing partner at Tima Title and Escrow. Um, we're a, a, a newer uh, company, but um, uh, newer doesn't always mean an experience. So um, I have a, a, a real estate brokerage background where I came from. Um, I also am a native 
from Alaska. Oh, yeah. hey. Uh huh. And I got out of there as soon as I. <laughs> um, so, anyways, um, we are really excited about uh, in, uh, disrupting the industry a little bit with some things that we do. Um, and I brought along uh, Landon Savage, who's a uh, partner development manager. So, go ahead. Yeah. Hi, guys. Landon. Um, so, my background is actually in lending. Um, been, we've been lending for a number of years. and. Uh, met team a title and loved what they had going on and ended up buying in as an owner and, and made the uh, full-time transition there. So here to help in any way I can. Cool. Um, hey, Scott, can you mute yourself? Sorry. And then you're good. Happy to see you jump on. Uh, Bridget, can you speak? Yes, hello. Sorry, I'm not able to be there in person. I'm Bridget with Summit Funding. And I've been with Summit Funding, gosh, for since 2014. And prior to that, I was with Prospect Mortgage. And prior to that, I was with Bank of America and got smart and got out of the big banks. Um, I'm similar to what Matt had said, is that we have a full support system um, in the operations center. So that way it allows me to go out and build relationships and meet with realtors and help them build their business. And I'd love to answer any questions anybody has about where the market's going. Thank you. Okay. Let's talk about the market and how to get business. Stacey? Oh, Let <laughs> someone random go. I don't think okay. <laughs> okay. We can, we can randomly, we can randomly go. Yeah. Like, what do you guys? What market I love? Yeah, I I love it. I think it's great. I'll I'll kick it off. I'll I'll only talk for a couple minutes. I think that we want to talk. Um, I think that we're at or or very near the bottom of the market. I think that this year is going to be huge for people who stick it out and see the opportunities. I think it's a fantastic time for buyers. I think that strategy is more important than ever when it comes to selling. Um, I think that the writing is on the wall for a recession which typically means home prices go up, interest rates go down. Mm -hmm. So with if you're looking at things through that mindset and with that future looming, it should color the way people are behaving today. So I'll sort of touch on, on that. And I'm sure that other people will want to weigh in and I don't want to, to take everything. So agree I, or disagree? No, I agree. <laughs> I From a realtor standpoint, there's a lot of realtors not renewing their they're due, so I'm like, heck yeah, they get I'll out. See you later. Yeah, if you don't want to work, bye bye. Um, I heard something like twenty thousand. Yeah, I'm like, it's mm -hmm. fine. Like, I get all the oh, new lists. Yeah, it's, yep. it's always, down. you know, that's fine. You don't want to work, you don't know how to work. See you later, or keep your license and refer me to business. Yeah. It's fine. I'll give you some commission, but um, yeah. this is the time you get out, you market, and and all freaking work. So. That's what we're doing with the home inspection business. We're actually marketing home inspectors that are getting out. And we're yeah. saying to them, hey, you want to keep your foot in the door? Let us help you. We'll pay your insurances and license fees and all. We'll pay your cut. And yeah. you'll eventually you'll get back in. It's a normal market. Yeah. That's all. No um, housing bubble. No marketing crash. No. No. Um, I opened up some of the news uh, media, some of their um, headlines, and it had nothing to do with the headlines. So, you know. Yeah, I think it, I think it's important to it, real estate is is local. So even from, uh, you know, it's hard to read national headlines. You can get you'll just get discouraged and give up, right? So you've got to pay attention to what's going on locally. For the first time, you know, Phoenix is in a truck stop town anymore, mm -hmm. right? We have real real industry. Higher paying jobs. I talked to a lender. He said we used to have nurses at twenty three dollars an hour ten years ago. Now they're making fifty three. Like it's a big difference. So yeah, rates are higher, uh, prices are higher, so affordability is <laughs> higher. Right? It's hard. It's harder. But um, we also have to wake up and be like, you know, we sound like our parents. Like I remember when you said so there was a nickel. Well, it's not a nickel anymore, right? So because you make. Yeah. So and and we're healthier here than anywhere else, right? I, I wouldn't want to be in the Midwest mm -hmm. doing real estate, right? So if we take that and we also couple that with a, an abundance mindset, if we start thinking like this is all mine, 
I'm going to just, you know, not to share my secrets and not collaborate right. or mastermind with people who are sitting across the table with me that do the same thing as I do. Then we can start creating deals and use mm -hmm. each other's knowledge to come up with different things like seller financing or wraps or assumptions or subject twos and, you know, pass that business along and create deals out of thin air. So. Chime in, Bridget, too. So even though you're on Zoom, like, yeah, I will. Okay. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I'm I just sharing with clients that, you know, obviously right now is somewhat of a challenging time as far as interest rates go, but I know us in all in lending, we're always talking about like the buy downs and how beneficial that can be as far as what the buyers can save per month. Um, I'm sharing, you know, the examples and how much it will save. And then also sharing, you know, over a 12 month period, you're basically setting yourself up for like a forced savings account by paying down that principal year over year. And I'll do a calculation for the borrowers just to show them how, how much that, you know, they're going to earn an appreciation and save over time. Are you guys experiencing more of uh, sellers helping pay for buyer buy downs? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And again, I think it comes down to getting over that initial hurdle of, well, I don't want to buy right now because the rates are high. I think that that's a huge misconception because I feel like it depends on the client's goals. If they, if their ultimate goal is to refinance when the rates drop, well, then paying an ex like a large amount of points may not be the best strategy. Maybe it is the temporary buy down, or maybe it's not. Maybe <laughs> let's, can you do this payment for two years in hopes that rates come down? Well, that's the discussion. Like, why would you spend, I don't know, 12, 15, $20,000 if your strategy is to not stay in this home for three years. Mm -hmm. So it, it's talking about back to the original conversation with the lender and the agent. What is your strategy, short-term and long-term? You have to know what those strategies are to then bring in those options of the temporary buy-downs and the three, two, ones and the using the seller's money to pay closing costs. All of those are great tools to make it affordable. FHA just announced they're lowering their MI per month. Um, yesterday that was announced, VA just announced they're lowering their funding fee. So they're trying to make things more affordable to hopefully combat the higher interest rate environment. So and rates are not the mm -hmm. end all be all of, right. of real estate. So right. getting like, are you, as an agent, are you rehearsing scripts to get over that hurdle? Because as lenders, we do, oh, yeah. it's in every conversation we have and you have to get them, educate them on what does this mean? And what does the future look like and how this is just a stepping stone to the future of lowering their interest rates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, low interest rates always isn't always a good time to buy, as we, we saw right. a couple of years ago. It was a bloodbath. Right. It wasn't a lot of value. Mm -hmm. it was yeah. yeah. Well, and I, I was gonna bring up what what does low interest rates mean to you guys? Like what's the new norm? 18 percent. Yeah. <laughs> so I well, mean five that could be <laughs> Like, yeah. I said, like an action item for the realtors that are on this phone call is be specific. So, oh, you know, I've got these, all my buyers are waiting. They're waiting for prices to come down or rates to come down. Like, what does that mean? Prices aren't going to come down. Like, you may be able to get a deal on something, but like, what do you mean? It could just be misinformation. Oh, I heard, yeah, you're talking about national rates. Oh, I heard national average seven and a half percent. Oh, I heard it's six percent. Like, it's all specific to the person. So get specific. Well, what are you afraid of? Do you know what those numbers actually mean? Do you have a con the context to make a decision, right? Because, oh, well, I can't buy a house yet. I only have 10%. Like, what are we talking about here? Like, let the, let the home create the other 10% equity for you. So I think that's the biggest thing is that I bet everyone on the Zoom call right now has someone who has told them I'm waiting for some generic thing. Yeah. And the best, I'd say, call to action, which I brought up before, is go back to those people and say, hey, I'm sorry, I messed up. I didn't ask you what specifically we're waiting for. When you say rates to go down, prices to go down, what does that mean? And they're going to go, well, I don't know because I have no idea what rates and prices are. Because I haven't done my homework because I'm too afraid of what I'm hearing, reading, et cetera, to take action. Because when people are scared or confused, they just don't leave. So if you go back to those people and say, 
what are you waiting for specifically, et cetera, then they can say, well, geez, I'm not quite sure. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? I've got a great lender that I can connect you with. You guys can have a conversation. Find out what that baseline is. Oh my gosh, I can't afford that. That's pretty cool. Or cool, I'm not in a place yet. Let's put a plan in place so that you're in front of the line once those things actually hit. And too often, like people are just scared of that conversation. They don't do their scripts. And they're like, oh, okay, I'll call you in four months. <laughs> Super. You're really adding value. <laughs> well, and and so we talk about, well, on today's topic too, was talking about different marketing. I don't know why I'm talking to the screen because no one can see my face. But, um, <laughs> it's we're talking about um, making videos. So when you're at, the agents are asking for content, this is content. So you can come up with different content of um, myth busters. So, and even pairing up with a lender or a, mark, or a title rep and having a, a little conversation on rates and mm -hmm. myth busters about the housing market. Like you can really have some fun content and you could, you could make like a whole 15 minute video and then break it up one minute at a time and then put it out there and you, you'd blow it up. So, and not, Scott, you're killing me small. Um, put it on, put it on your social feeds, but also don't forget about YouTube. So that has become the biggest um, push right now too, is YouTube. YouTube short. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and Shannon, I definitely want her to talk about the marketing for this year, but, um, and it doesn't need to be just real estate. So that was the other aspect I wanted because people want to get to know you as a person, not just always real estate. So, so I posted today, um, it's in stories, but I have reshared um, a really good, it's a swipeable, but it's in stories and I screenshotted each one. Um, Building a digital and personal brand is huge for anyone in their business, regardless of whether it's real estate, lending, anything else that you're doing to promote yourself, because a lot of perception is, did I get enough likes? Did I get enough people viewing my video? It does not matter. Mm -hmm. You want it to create conversation. Yep. So if you're not creating conversations and you're not engaging with your social platforms, you're wasting your time. And so every meeting I've had in the last 30 mm -hmm. days has been about um, you know, I look at stuff, I call them swipers, like thumb ups, you know, likers. Um, you really do want to use social media, especially if you have a tight budget right now to do marketing. Um, you want to be using your social media platforms as the way to reach your sphere of influence because people are on there. The national average is 30 minutes a day. 86% of your friends, followers are going to be on there 30 plus minutes a day. So even if you're the person commenting, liking, saying something else and you don't want to create the content, that is better than doing absolutely nothing. Yeah. Um, so especially with newer agents coming in, wanting to <clears throat> reach their sphere to let them know that they're realtors, let them know what they're doing. It's a really simple post to be able to do that. Yeah. Instagram just had a new algorithm rolled out. So some of you guys know that Instagram Previously was a stagnant image marketing platform, very pretty like news feed. Then they had a new rollout where they were talking about their video platform. And now they just released a new um, rollout because they're doing the meta um, certification that they are now back to stagnant images. So oh they gosh. are back to stagnant images because, and I do believe this is true, YouTube came out with their YouTube shorts and YouTube all long has dominated video platform of all the socials. And I think that this is just my, what is it called? My conspiracy theory. But I do believe that that's why Instagram did that. You know, they tried the IGTV. So does that mean not to create video? Absolutely not. Yeah. So create video. But just remember as you're marketing yourself in 2023, we are a digital age. We have to have video, we have to have picture. It does not have to be all the time. And mm -hmm. there's a great algorithm for it, which I can talk about at some point if you guys want to. Um, but YouTube shorts are huge, 15 <laughs> minutes vertical. So create yeah. your YouTube station, please. Subscription, whatever, it's, do it. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, for those that came to the bigger, we had our event, the bigger 2023, it's in the suite assist and I shared it. So Jess is my coach and 
Ryan, the, her whole group under there. And that's, I mean, I have to upload just my coaches 30 videos. And my husband was laughing yesterday. He's like, I could hear you over and over. And I'm like, it's not, it's not right. And and making videos for bliss because I'm working on the onboarding steps. And I'm like, well, it's not right. And he's like, and and I made a video for my newsletter. And I was like, Bleh. You know, and I emailed it to my newsletter team. And they're like, oh, this is great. And I'm like, yeah, but uh, I don't, you know, but yeah, I'm like, oh, super. But again, like what Shannon says is it, you can't look at the lights and, and the views. And because if you're not getting leads from it, then what are you doing? Change up your content. Then. And I agree because I think that there's consumers consuming content, right? Mm -hmm. The thumb ups or what, what are you, whatever you call them. And then there's creators. Yeah. And which side of the table are you going to be on? Are you going to be a consumer and constantly consuming content like TikTok people mm -hmm. that go and just watch TikToks? Or are you just actually going to create content and be the expert? Yeah. And it doesn't have to be perfect. No. I think if you just start somewhere and there's yeah. all the partners in this room mm -hmm. are here to help you start somewhere and yes. just stay consistent with it. Yeah. If it's YouTube, stay consistent. If it's Instagram, keep doing it. Don't yeah. record one video and wait six weeks Yeah. for the next video. They're going to think you got out of the business. Yeah. That you just have to be searchable. Well, the benefit is, is all the social platforms, specifically Instagram, they reward you for using their stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, now they have templates. You can just use a template if you want to create a video. So for all those people out there who don't want to be on camera, yeah, I'm going to say you don't have to be, no. even though I think it's okay. Yeah. You can use your voice as a voiceover. You can use stagnant yeah. images. You can use video images. You don't have to be on camera. They've made it so easy for you and they reward you for it. Yeah. Um, so if you use it, you will be rewarded and then they'll push your data out. And they've actually just, they just literally yesterday rolled out the newest algorithm that was talking about that. Um, so to that point, I wanted to say something um, for the agents out there who are doing open houses. I know Scott's on there and also chime in, but it's such a good place to get content. Oh, yeah. And video homes and let people know that you're doing real estate stuff, even if you're previewing new builds. Um, so that's my hot spot this week. Yes. Yeah. Take well, a friend off the table. Well, friend take a friend have them yeah. video you. Like yeah. take an agent. You guys can take turns videoing each other. Like it it's it's the perfect content and also filler. So like if you're talking and you're talking about you know, a new build, you can do the voiceover and talk about it. Those ones get thousands and thousands of views. So um, I, I told some agents, I go, go to a, a rehab house, go to a dump. Everyone goes to the new homes, go to a crap house and talk about a fixer upper. Like if you're wanting to try and find investors or talk about inspections, like you're trying to pull up myths about real estate and talk about myth busters and give out tips. Like you're trying to get buyers and sellers. So give out pointers how real estate, you know? So go find some crap houses and talk about it and, and get in there, you know? So I was like, just try to be different. Um, that to me, I thought that was kind of funny. I may actually start doing that. So like, well, if I'm telling agents to do it, I might as well do it. But 2023 is about, you, we can't keep doing what we've been doing the last 20 years to get business. So um, it's a great time and it's a great market, but we all have to be different. So another good way to get your stuff pushed quickly is there's the you know national calendar you guys can look at. There's like a taco day or a donut day. If you're posting something that has to do with what's going on in the world on that day, they automatically push your stuff. Oh, that's a good idea. So if you're running short on content or want something like that, just look up that. So like do a video of eating a donut? Something like, yeah, or like your favorite donut place. Do yeah. lots of things. Yeah. That would be <laughs> Because I, 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 well, yeah, I think if you, if you post something on real estate every day of the week, people are just go. Yeah. 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 Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Just show yeah. me something like self-deprecating self yeah, yeah. 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 it's like making ice coffee yeah yeah uh, make fun yourself it's the, like the problem is is that a lot of people do what everyone else is doing yeah, yeah. the finger pointing they're doing the the, the, the written stuff, 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 stuff ridiculous dancing 
you just can't. I mean, do it on TikTok. Yeah, you can't. And, and unfortunately, like someone sees that someone had good results, so then they want to do it. But we're all different. Yeah. And the but biggest thing for, I mean, I, I have lots of videos. <laughs> I'm so bad for that. But I do lots of different videos. But I'm I'm saying that because if 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 someone could find what they love or that they enjoy doing that not everybody knows about, that's what, that's like your meal ticket. Yeah. Where people, you can incorporate real estate into that or lending or whatever you want. But if you can find what that is that you like, and then you can put buy a home with me as you're playing basketball. I mean, people don't care. No, they're not reading it. I mean, they are reading it to an extent, but these long-winded messages aren't. So. No. I put a video of me needing pizza dough. I don't know when people watched it. It was weird. I was like, the visual of so For 10 minutes, I have to make for because we fire up pizza. And I was like, oh, I guess maybe I should be making a video of this. So I set my phone up and videoed my hands doing it. And I was like, okay. So I put it on YouTube and yeah, there's views. I was like, that's creepy. But well, and save it for later if you don't want to post it in that moment or keep a note or a yeah, oh or no, you know, something so, about all your ideas because yeah. you're going to have days where you're not feeling it. Oh, yeah, in terms of recording. Yeah, and you you just go to your list and you're like, oh, yeah. that one looks okay. Like, I'll do that yeah. one or just save a folder of your videos for your bloopers. Yeah, I love oh, it. You were the yeah, right. Hour today, what's yeah. going on? But people just want to know you. <laughs> they want to meet you in person and go, You're so much like your video. That's yeah. so crazy that you, like the you're the same. Because so, how many videos have you recorded where you're like, like you just, oh, you're yes, recording and then you stop it? You can yeah. put those into a reel and do like, you know, oh. 60 of them. <laughs> yeah. People I don't know, yeah. We um as long as you're not cussing up the store every time you mess up. Oh <laughs> so I think there's there's an elephant in the room. Does social media bring you deals? Are you asking me? Asking me. I will I will say because there's a misconception out there. I will it's say no. Problem. Yes. It's I really. would say no. Yeah, it's hard to probably pinpoint it, but if you're staying in front of your sphere, there's also arguments that you shouldn't be if you're an agent, you shouldn't be friends with a bunch of agents. Yeah. My the algorithm will say, I'm going to put someone just like you in front of you all the time. So they find out you're an agent and then they, mm -hmm. so you got to make sure you, you want to be um, printing all your leads, prospects, uh, some of the CRMs out there, you can actually search yeah. when they look, when they drop mm -hmm. in, if you do like internet leads, yeah, you can actually do a search so you can like stop them mm -hmm. afterwards if they're on there. Um, <laughs> but you don't want, it doesn't do any good for uh, Ted O'Rat put a bunch of videos out and then had a bunch of Ted O'Rat and they're like, oh, this is really good. Yeah. You know, it's like, what is okay. that? It's like, oh, in a yeah. You need, you want to try and get in front of an actual audience that's not. But that's how your... you, Albert, yeah, that's the algorithm you use on socials. You have to tell Instagram that this person is not my audience. So again, that's where your, your interactions on the socials matter. And a lot of people mm -hmm. don't do it. A lot of people are the swipers, the viewers, the, the digesting. The way you teach the algorithm to work is everything you put out should be what a consumer wants to see. Mm -hmm. So if you're a realtor and you want people to buy homes with you, why would they want to buy a home with you? Are you, um, there's an agent who does this amazing in Vegas. His name is Greg Las Vegas. He picks up like he picks, his, he, picks, he, well, that's his name. he picks his zip code and he specializes in that zip code for a month and he is killing it. He is at all the speaking events. He's a huge top producer and what he does is great because you can, you can, a lot of people will try to duplicate it, but they can't because they're not consistent. But what he does is he makes people want to go there because they want to know about this specific place in Vegas, this restaurant in Vegas, this place to buy shoes in Vegas. He's essentially branding himself as the industry or area specialist. Right. So people go to him to get information and ask questions. That to me is how social media works. Like yeah, you ask, yeah. If you ask, like does it make transactions happen? Um, it's not a I mean, you know websites don't work, right? No. But, but so it is a place where people, someone's going to search your name, 
Instagram, Facebook have the highest analyzed words. So if someone searches your name, that's what's going to come up before your website or anything else. If someone wants to know about you, that's where they're going to go. Yeah. So I do think it brings you business. Is it tangible? Is it Trackable, yeah. report a month ago, Tina came out. 84% of all residential sales last year came from your sphere. Yeah. 84% of all sales came from your sphere. Yeah. So the reason I bring that up is because a lot of newer agents immediately think, well, if I don't do this, I'm not going to get leads. And then, or they put all their eggs in that yeah. basket yeah. and then only do social and then don't do anything else. I think you have to be doing social as a branding tool, correct? but then also door knocking and calling leads and doing other things within yeah. your sphere to drive them to your social to then say property. Mm -hmm. you, you can't, there's so many missing links between those two. It's it's just another branch and um, a, a lead source, that's all. Yeah. Um, I like it because you can connect with people from all over the world. Yeah. So. And you can either, and really taking it a step further is not posting just listed, just sold crap. It's, it's, um, it's actually doing ads and targeting ads. So if you want to be specific in keywords and certain age groups or, um, but it's open houses, but doing an open house correctly so that you're door knocking and targeting and actually going after listings, not, not actually buyers. So there's there's just so many pieces to getting clients that um, um, and you, and again as a realtor like we have so many different funnels it's not I mean you can get leads from other realtors out of state it's not um, yeah I social media is just a piece but that is probably in the top five I would say. If you want to save money, yeah. Yeah, I also say if, if you're a newer agent, you sh shouldn't, you're gonna like give up if you're trying to do five Everything. different things. Yeah. Pick, pick something that you're good at yeah. and then maybe something else and like try and be an expert. It may not work out. Yeah. You may have a family and you can't do open house. Yeah. Can't do it, right? I have five kids, impossible yeah. but to be an agent and do that, right? But um, you know, and we have to be cognizant that we're a transient city. Like we're gonna double by 2035, we're gonna have eight million people here. We're at like four and a half or whatever the county came up with. So you gotta have some sort of to use an Alaskan expression, line in the water mm -hmm. for the out-of-state people, mm -hmm. not just local, because yeah. that's where we're gonna get them. Yeah. How are you getting me? Do you put an event together? Do you network? Go to the HR. Go to the HR. Uh, well, and relocation. So, because of the market the last couple of years, because the market was so freaking hot, companies mm -hmm. weren't paying for relocation. Mm -hmm. And buyer or the employees were calling the shots. You know, they didn't, they, they weren't paying for relocation and no one was paying for headhunting. Um, so, I think we're going to see that probably taking a shift again. And relocation probably coming back. So um, maybe not this year, but probably by next year, and maybe with the recession too, we'll probably see that happen more is relocation. So, and that in is finding an employee to connect you with HR, the relocation person. So I don't think that I know that I'm, I'm probably on the lower end of the social media knowledge base, especially. I don't care how good you are. I don't think that social media replaces calling people or meeting people or having coffee. Relations. It's, it is. It's a thing that people sometimes do, and they're like, "I'm going to just spend my time doing this because, again, they're afraid of doing the other thing that's a little bit more pot committed to creating a relationship to calling. Like, call your friends. You don't have a database. Go through your phone and just start calling from the A's. There's just so many things that sometimes people are doing realtors, lenders, title, whatever are doing to be busy and fill time as opposed to what am I trying to get out of this? Do I have a goal or am I just trying to say like, I spent time today doing a thing, hope the phone starts yeah. ringing and the, my yeah. email starts banging and text messages like, yeah. get on the phone. Hey, just a reminder, like I'm new to real estate. 
I'm trying to expand. Like, do you know anyone? Like, you work for ABC Corp. Like, do you ever hear anyone talking about blah blah blah? Like, I'd love. <laughs> I'd love to to connect with them. I'd love to have an opportunity to talk to them or whatever. So, again, like, sure, I'm I'm not good at social media, but I'm really good at phone calls. I'm really good at connecting and meeting and doing those sorts of things. And I can tell you how many deals and relationships and transactions that I get from there. Um, and those are measurable and that's easily trackable. Uh, and so the conversion rates are a lot higher with that. So I'd, I'd also sort of pull back and caution doing the social media thing and sitting in booth. Well, the open houses are, sorry, no. the open houses are nice because that's where you're talking to people and building a relationship and making a connect. So there's still the all the marketing and the beforehand pieces of before, but then when people are there, you're able to interact and talk to people. And that's what's super important. So um, open houses, but then that's where agents screw up is the follow-up after. Yeah. The before, so yeah. They, they're either the, the before or the after, and then they just... Um, we even talked about this at the bigger 2023, like the internet leads, like Ryan, one of my coaches, he was like, how many agents call your internet leads call once? And everyone raised their hand. He goes, great. So he built his, his whole team, 250 agents off internet leads, straight up internet leads. And he's like, so how many agents call set, call twice and call three times? And no one in the room raised their hands. And so I messaged Ryan, I go, no one raised their hand. He's like, okay, so we need to have a one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> so just like in the open houses, no one follows up with those leads. Or you're so excited, you do the follow-up, and then after a month or two, no one follows up again. So or you spend an hour on the marketing with the social media stuff, and you spend zero time on scripting and having conversations right. with people to walk into the open house and you're like, sign in here. I'd rather not. Okay. No, sign in. Do you register or bye bye? Yeah, and that's obviously making sense. me simple. Like it's not our house, it's a homeowner's house. Yeah. So um yeah, no, I'm gonna we're doing it, gonna do an open house class, but I did as a brand new agent for two years straight, did open house. The best thing that's pretty nice. Yeah. You do it all. I think kind of what we're hearing consensus is the time is over where either deals are just going to end. They don't. In any of the industries. Correct. Title, lending, realtor. Yeah. We used for, for the last five, six years, it's just yeah. come. And now it's not happening. So now it's actually taking good old-fashioned hard work and mm -hmm. ingenuity and ideas and creativity and running a business. Jeff, right. You have to do everything else. It and is a business. You can't sit yeah. at your desk and wait for your business plan. No. So, um, yeah, all these things are great ideas, and you can't just rely on this. Like you said, just that this is going to solve it all. You've got to do everything and go back to the basics. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for a while, nobody was doing all that. So it's been walking yeah. and knocking uh, doors, and nobody would do that. So get out there and still do it. before you can home. Yeah. yeah. House. Open mm -hmm. house on site. Uh, another good tool that um, I've seen a lot of success in is and it doesn't have to be, uh, I'm not even going to plug it, but there are apps out there that you can use to um, send out group checks. And mm -hmm. um, I've used the ones from third party, and then you have some random number. People oh, are like, yeah. hey, did you change your number? Or is this really you? But there's some good apps out there that you can send a group text. You can create you know, past clients or open house registers or you know whoever, right? And you can send one text out and it has the fields, it comes from your cell phone, your number, and, you know, it, it, it'd be like, hi, Shannon, your name came up the other day, we haven't talked in a while, hope family's doing good, oh, like, just something that it, they're like, oh, he texted me, like, he's thinking of me, and, it, and instead of a, the, the generic, like, blanket text that you're like, oh, yeah, happy Merry Christmas to you too, buddy, like, you're sending that to everybody on that special, so that's a really good tool, because you can get, uh, you know, if you have a book of business, that's a good way to stay in front of them once a quarter. Um, and then also, if you're doing open houses and you have a laundry list, you can make something really specific to the to that open house. Rob, do you have uh, specific apps? So I like Hit'em Up, H-I-T-E-M-U-P. 
I don't, I'm not, I don't have any stock. I don't have any stock. It's 50 bucks a year and um, it's super easy. And you just, it accesses your contacts and then you just go in and that's a fast find, that's a fast find, that's a fast find. And then you send them out and it doesn't hit them all at once either. So you don't just get like, yeah, you, you literally just, you can do 10 at a time and then wait. And then 10 at a time and then wait. And I have, uh, I, I told that to an agent and she literally, I go, what do you do for your past business? She's like, oh, they just come to me. And I'm like, no, they don't. <laughs> and she's been doing it for a while. And she lived, she was like, oh my God, that's the best thing I've ever done. I'm one of my buyers coming over to watch the football game tomorrow. And then the other one's going to, we're going to go show homes. And I picked up a listing in Flagstaff. And I was like, what? And so that was just a crazy good example. But then it led to another sale where the person listed two homes in Bono. So. Mm -hmm. And it's a, and they think you're literally thinking about it. Yeah. One of my things I was going to say, not on topic, kind of on topic of that, but the two things that when I meet with agents is do you have a CRM? Do you use it? And are you time blocking? And I know that's kind of like when, you, when we're talking about how to get business, when I'm going through whether someone's been super busy and now they're slow, or someone who's brand new, those are the two hot spots that you have to figure out first, because if they don't have a CRM, they're not going to have any way to scale their business. And also they have no time blocking set up to do their marketing. And so on topic of that, past clients right now, so now that we're going into tax season, I'm telling you, I see some of the agents on there are seasoned, but um, going into anything that you closed last year and sending them their, um, well, I actually suggest doing a phone call, but doing their settlement statements as a way to have their tax paperwork ready. Um, it's a great strategy to reach out to clients that you closed last year and ask for the referral um, and talk to them about what's going on in the market. And then of course, going a step further in your CRM, who did you sell over the last several years who might be interested in either upgrading or downgrading? Um, but doing that tax paperwork now is super important going into that season because you have a perfect way to reach out to everybody. Um, so a lot of the agents that I'm meeting with right now are doing that and they're sending a text, but then they're also calling and then you get a couple of touches because they don't know why you're trying to reach them until you actually get them on the phone and then you can send that paperwork off to them. Yeah, most CRMs have that passing mm -hmm. send a text, yeah. but it's not going to come from yeah, right. So I, I like strongly that. encourage send, finding a platform that sends it from your cell phone, and you actually type it out. So it's like you can pity me. This I don't. I'm a I'm a uh, grammatical Nazi, so <laughs> I would never misspell something on purpose. But if you want to make it sound really personal, please <laughs> have that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and you know, or just something where they're like, oh yeah. Like, like B to B, B to B, we we smell that out all day long. Are you ever sending something? Yeah. Right, yeah. but the B to C, they're like, oh, this is great. Like, so the big word in this room right now is follow up. Mm -hmm. You have yeah. to have follow up plan when you bring in clients or leads or prospects. Mm -hmm. You better have a plan, whether that's a plan with your lender or just a plan on your own to stay in front of and be in constant contact with these people because you don't want to lose them and have them fall through the cracks mm -hmm. because it takes like we were talking earlier it, it, we work so hard to get them you don't want to lose them and you yeah. might lose them if you're not in front of them mm -hmm. so follow-up is key both in the in the beginning after an open house and then also once they've talked to a lender maybe they're not ready for one or two years what's your plan mm -hmm. so I, I i get excited because arizona's growth like rob said we have i mean Coolidge themselves, they have Procter and Gamble coming. That they have, that's over 500 jobs, just opening. So, and that's within the next year. You're not coming with these chip plants. So, yeah. So, what's so many jobs they have? Right. We, yeah, the growth here and in international buyers, it's it's crazy. So when the the news is recording housing stat, I'm like, yeah, can't listen. Um, but again, when we're talking to clients, we always have to combat that. Like Arizona has never followed anything nationally. We're always different. So where do you guys expect this year 
to kind of go, you know, if there is a recession, even though we still have jobs here, we have jobs coming in growth. Like, do you guys think? Well, there's, there's national, there's national flavor to everything. I think Rob hit on it really well. Like it's, it's all local though. Like, so you can't ignore something. Yeah. Right. But like nationally, when we have a recession, we don't just like that does tend to be national and that does have an impact on overall the prices free. and the rates and things like that. But what most people think is like, cool, I'm going to wait for the recession and I'm going to get a house on the cheap. And right. it's like, no, because what happens yeah. is, and, and you can argue what happens first, but interest rates go down because mm -hmm. of the affordability stuff. And so when interest rates go down a quarter, creates a half a percent like happened a couple weeks ago, I guarantee you got more calls. Like yeah. all of a sudden Very a million more people can afford to be on the low level of the housing market. And now with, with like Stacey was saying, FHA announcing MIP going down, uh, VA announcing reductions in their funding fees, um, the Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and the low level pricing adjustments, all of that is geared toward first time home buyers, lower, more affordability stuff because what happened when things were kind of weird, funky over the last two years and specifically the last six months, when there's blood in the streets, people go out and try to make money. Mm -hmm. I had no shortage of investors going like, I don't care what the rate is. Like, this is, yeah. this is great. Like I'm gonna gobble all this stuff up and when rates come back down, cool, I just made 40 grand in equity and now I'll just refinance. And so a lot of that, a lot of the way that things are gearing towards is more punitive on that the higher end people that can afford more second homes, non owner occupied, and trying to help people with lower credit scores with less money get into homes. Um, and so that's, I think, a huge push, but the lower end of the spectrum that people can afford is also going up. Mm -hmm. So you wait and you go, cool, I'm going to wait for prices to go down, or well, we're expecting a normal sort of appreciation here. And in Arizona, that's three to 8%, depending yeah. on where you're at. Yeah. I dare you to wait six months and see if the home price goes down. Yeah, but the rate will be less, and so my payment will be less. Well, great. Then buy the house today, do a 1 0 buy down, and then refinance in seven months to a year if that's what you think is going to happen. And what, you know, it's, it's obvious when you say it in a room like this where everyone sort of gets it, but you have to take the time to explain that and help hold some hands and get to that point where people are comfortable. And cool, if you're not there, who else do you know that might be there? Like, great. Are, are your friends now that were, you're buying a house, are they not going, wait, how is she buying a house? How is he buying a house? We can help them too. Because when they when we talked the first time, you weren't sure either. So I would, again, encourage those conversations with the understanding that if rates go down, more buyers are in the market and prices go up. And mo most people think it's the opposite. Every time in the last 20 years we've had a recession, home prices have gone up. Yeah, and to piggyback on that, I think it's important to, to really partner with a lender that mm -hmm. can have these types of conversations about yeah. coming over overcoming rate objection. And I think if agents get in the weeds on talking about rates and 10 year <laughs> yield and just <laughs> shit. And this like you don't want to get into the weeds on them unless you have like a finance background, right? No. So you really want to, you know, a good overcome, a good overcoming objection would be, have you, um, have you heard about affordability options or creative financing options out there, which can be a buy down or it could be, um, you know, some a wrap. Um, um, you know, there's there's several different things to just get them off that to hand them off to a, to talk to them. Right? And I think also you get you should go to your lenders and talk to them and say. Hey, what about your turn downs? Like, where are you seeing them? Well, we're seeing they have the cash, but their DTI is too high because they're self-employed and they let everything off. Okay, well, let's let's see if we can get that guy into. Uh, he's got the down payment. Let's see if they can, you know, do a wraparound purchase or uh, an assumption. There's some VA assumptions out there. There's some different creative financing things that get them into the home, and then when the rates do come down, they can roll out of it then. Right, so you're passing business back and forth. It's like, yeah, you're not going to get the, the the financing piece today. You're not going to get that transaction. But if we can get this guy in, and he'll come back when the rates are at four and a half percent, and he'll be roll right out. So there's there's 
I think those discussions need to, to happen, but don't try not to get in the weeds on it. Just like there's lots yeah. of programs out there that are affordable. You know, you can get under a 5% with some light outs. I've seen it. Talk to this, you know, get out of that, get in and out of that conversation as fast as you can as an agent and get them to a lender. And sometimes there's a hesitation when someone is initially going to a lender. So I'm sure you guys do this, but I used to say, hey, we're not going to pull credit. I'm not going to ask for an app. Like, just have a conversation. See if you're close. Right. Sometimes that helps push people because they kind of get. They, it's like almost that car salesman type thing when you're walking onto a lot. You're yeah. Just like we're not. We're not going to do it. <laughs> just have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. 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 It's realtors like just talk to your clients about not making assumptions about their own situation. Talking with a lender, we're going to be able to pick out. Yeah where their strengths are and what they need to work on within probably the first 10 to 15 minutes on the phone. And then we can make a plan for them. If they don't have the savings, if they've got the credit, if they don't have the credit, we can do soft polls. So they, there's so many different options now that makes it stop with this and it, we have a plan. And if the agent knows that your lender is there to make a plan, the conversation is so different. Yeah. I'm going to say just a general rule of thumb. I, I've owned multiple businesses and all. We talk this talk all day, every day. You kind of you can assume that every everyone like knows this. No, they don't. Mm -hmm. right. You really do have. Yeah, I thought six eighty was a bad score. Yeah, yeah. you know. They didn't even know that. Yeah, they're all there. They think that they have to do twenty percent or they have to have seven eighty credit score. You don't. Ren? I think the best thing to do is to educate and remove the fear that buyers and you know, other people have in this industry right now and just educate your clients on the options. And like Matt said, if they're not ready, eventually they will, but at least they have the information to make the best decision for them and their family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if they're not ready and they do nothing and then they're ready, then they might not be ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do the joke like, hey, are you thinking about buying a home in the next four months? Well, if the answer is yes, great, because the credit report's good for that long. No, great, this inquiry is going to fall off. Let's figure it out now. Um, people right. just get in their way all too often. It's like, well, I don't want to do it now because I don't think I'm ready. Well, what are you not ready about, right? Like, push back on it. Hey, I'm waiting for rates to come down. Cool, will you tell me when that is? Because I want to call everyone like a week before that. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's crazy what people will do because again, they're scared or they think that you're going to check their credit or they think that they have misinformation. Well, I only have 15% down or I only have blah, blah, blah. And so people put up barriers. And a lot of time, unfortunately, agents mm -hmm. don't know the right way to hold a hand and, and deliver a warm introduction. It's like, can't show you houses if you're not pre qualified That is just so wrong. Like, yeah. hey, would you like to have a conversation with someone who can give you some answers to your question? Help you feel better about putting a plan in place. Like, there's other ways to do that, to be in a position where you can actually be a resource as opposed to, well, when I got in the business, I heard you have to have a pre -qual. So I keep saying pre -qual, <laughs> and know. it freaks every buyer out. There's a, prequel. We've got to just change up our mentality and how we do things as realtors. I get safety, but it's it's just there's so many of us. And I, I get you don't want to waste your time, but depending on the type of client, like um, we have a client there, I mean they're a million dollar client. Well, they are gonna take months to look. So million dollar clients don't go out on one weekend and find a house to buy. They take their time. So I'm sorry to most agents that will get frustrating. And I get frustrated. I'm like, dang it. Like, come on. You know, I just want to go, go, go. I have a, you know? a question for you Yeah. on that. So or not quite on that, but I think another thing that realtors do, and I don't know, sometimes it comes from the broker. So this is why I'm asking. Sure. Hey, we have to give two, three names, something like that. Is that an instruction that you give? So it it used to be in our ethics that we had to give out. So there's no rule. Now on. there's no rule. So I know. my point there would be no like, you don't, the last thing that we want is like, cool, here's Matt, Bridget, and Stacy. You right. should call them and guess what they're going to do? Right. Call zero people because right. they're like, 
Well, each of these is an hour and each of these is an app and I don't have my taxes. Like, yeah, you've confused them. So yeah. again, they're not going to take action. Instead, hey, can I refer you to a lender that I know and trust? Yeah. If for some reason it's not a good fit, let me know and I'll introduce you to someone else. Yeah, mine's like, more of based on their personality mm -hmm. or um, situation, I guess. But I, the yeah. point there, I think a lot of people think they have to, and yeah. there is no rule that says you have to refer more than one mm -hmm. of anything. And I know that just there's personal preference or whatever, yeah. but I would, I just from a psychological standpoint, yeah. the more options, the more confusion, the less likely someone is to take action. I have a solution to that. Here's Matt, Stacy, and Bank of America. Here's <laughs> Matt, oh, Bank of America, and Chase. Yeah. Here's Stacy, B of A, and Chase. <laughs> so guess what? They're never going to call the other guy. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Like the other yeah. thing I want to piggyback on that is that you're allowing the client to make assumptions about their situation. I had a referral come over from Emily Bladder, who's the agent at Bliss, and I worked on the free call. Well, the client told the agent that she was ready to go, like ready to go. Well, meanwhile, I had zero documents. We had our initial conversation. I sent her an email. I sent her a mortgage coach, which is, which is a really cool tool that you can show somebody options. You know, we did, we're kind of playing around with down and I told her, hey, I need your documents and I want to have a secondary call because I want to go over and fine tune your prequel. I don't want to just send it out there without us having a conversation. She was like, oh, that's silly. And I was like, still, this is my process. I want to go over it with you. Guess how long the call was with that client? Hour an half. hour. Going over principal, interest, um, when their payment's going to be due. Mm -hmm. I mean, you name it, we went over it. And she was like, wow, I had no idea. What uh, I didn't know, uh, I just wanted to get out there shopping, but really it was, this was more about strategy. Again, if you have someone that's like, you know, my credit sucks, which that could be on any different scale, by the way, yeah. any, you ask anyone what a crappy credit score is, they'll tell you something different, Yeah. but get them off of that and into strategizing a plan to get them into home ownership in the next one to two years. That will lower the pressure and Hey, no pressure, like use that term, no pressure. Like, yeah. why are we going to call them 800 times if they don't want to buy right now? We'll have our initial call and then we'll follow up with them a couple months later. Like, there is zero pressure coming from the lenders in this room and then also Bridget. Yeah. We're just wanting what's best for the customer and for you, the agent. Yeah. Well, okay. you mentioned mortgage coach, and I like the fact that that's one thing that agents can do is we have a lot of resources and tools at home. Visually show somebody, like, you may, you may say it to them and conceptually you think they understand, but they need to see something visual on paper or via email. You know, PDF that actually shows, like, for example, uh, Rare versus Own Analysis, mm -hmm. or like you said, Mortgage Coach. Yep. I love Mortgage Coach. <clears throat> love it. But it's good because they're visual, and that, that's something that I think a lot of, and it sets you out as a lender, but also, like, a lot of agents don't know we have these resources that we can use to help their clients understand that now is a good time to buy, or, you know, things like that. So I think that's one just about having that valuable partnership and knowing what we, you know, the, the relationship there, what we can provide them. And what they can request from us so that we can help clients get on the same page I think is important. I think lender and title too, our job is also education. So creating an educated consumer will work better with you while you're showing them property. Right. So if you're not going to get the, well, what about this, this, and this? Like you're not, you're it's going to limit those questions and and then just redirecting them back to your lender partner if something comes up where it's like, I heard my rate, this is this rate high. Like please don't answer that question yeah. because you don't know their credit score. You don't know some of their specifics. Yeah. So just say, you know what? This is a better conversation for Matt or Stacey or whoever. Like, go back to your lender. Please try not to answer the rate conversations because we will. We'll try not to answer the Benzer questions. Mm -hmm. How about yeah. that? Well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I would be very careful about saying any number ever. Absolutely. I don't. Because, absolutely. Because you'd be like, oh, I've heard rates are in the mid sixes. Great. You have just, if, if we're in a bad rate environment, you've just screwed yourself and whoever they talk to. Yeah. Because now it's like, oh, six, six, seven. seven. You know, we're starting at seven instead of 6.5. Well, I'm not going to buy that. It's like, great. You, you're like, you've given a number, you've anchored someone with no context. Okay. So what if I just go high? Well, you've said seven now, and now they're too scared because it's too yeah, high. Don't, do it. don't say a number. <laughs> yeah. Depends. You know, it's a great question. It depends. I bet if you talk to whoever, like they could give you some more context. Yeah. Well, and that sets us up for success because then we can say, oh, the down payment programs are higher. These are those rate ranges. Regular loans are here. Like we are able to then give that information. 
in a context that we can now explain to the consumer. Well, I remember I worked for a bank for a while and we had to start at one point um, or go higher. And in an environment like this, it's like, you know, you're going to refi soon. So it makes sense to put one to two points down now and mm -hmm. you're never going to see the savings realization from that. So, yeah, I well, the so has been. <laughs> well, then we're going to take right because we're just going to. Yeah. Well, the problem, the problem too is that everybody's going to have been relying on the seller today. Well, uh, you just said today, like, we're, you know, we're six months now into this. Those high price sales, those comps, are going to start yeah. falling off. So things are going to start, they're not going to stop appraising. So if you're like, well, let's just go 10 over and then ask for 10 grand back towards concessions, not going to happen. I mean, it could happen, but more than likely, you're going to have a hard time with an appraisal because, yeah. because that, that window's gone. I, I've been saying it since last fall. You have about till January, February to use those inflated prices from last you know, summer previous, right? Every six months, you can't use those comps anymore. So you can't rely on the seller to pay closing costs unless you're getting it at today's value. If I can make a general um, statement, I used to own a brokerage company and I wrote sales scripts all the time. And I think you made this point earlier. There's agents out there. My wife is one of them that hates to, to speak. She gets nervous. She can't remember. She can't think. She does very, very well. She found her strengths. But I'm a huge proponent of sales scripts. Write them down. You're right. You don't know what to say. So role play with yourself. Ask as if act as if someone has called you and asked about rates and what am I going to say to them? Write it down. Practice it. They've done studies that, that people that don't even like scripts, if you take someone and put them in an environment where they're trying to sell a product, they will use something and that'll be good and they'll keep it. They'll use something else and that'll be bad and they'll say, I won't say that again. And the next thing you know, they've created their own script. They take everything that they've found that works for them and they start saying that over. So sure, if you're not quick off the top of the head, your vocabulary is not huge, just write it down. Role play in your, in your bedroom with yourself. You know, they said this to me, what would I say? You know, when you do that often enough, pretty soon when somebody asks you that question, you've got an answer for them right then. You're not nervous, you're not fumbling. Well, we'll wrap it up because it's it's after 11. Um, thank you guys for coming. Thanks, Bridget, for jumping on and the agents. Um, I just wanted to, to cap it. So this year is going to be a good real estate year. That's what I got out of this. And agents are, are getting out of the business that don't want to work. Um, I think the rental market's pulled down a little bit. So it's it's not gotten up. Terry says, thank you all. Have great. Have a great day. Um, and interest rates probably leveled out a little bit. We don't really know, but we just know that we got to work hard and change up our marketing and not be afraid to work and get out there and meet people and that um, get a good uh, partnership and team that back you. Realtors are not lenders and we're not title reps. So, um, we know that we should not be discussing any of that stuff um, and change how you're you're doing business, maybe listing presentations and buyer presentations. So um, Brian says, thank you. Good uh, overall industry perspective. So yeah, you guys have questions, reach out. Um, this is recorded. We have scripts in Sweet Assist and um, let me know if you guys need anything. I'm going to shut this down. Bye, so, guys. Bye. Thank Bye. you. So do I understand this right that over our 50